welcome you to talk about an unconquered spirit, you just have to look at Cab Rennick. He was proud of his Native American heritage, and he wanted to represent them in honor. Within the Chickasaw Nation is the town of Marietta. That's where he lived and grew up. Started playing basketball on the dirt floor there. It was a strong rural sport um, at this time period. He was coming of age uh, during the Great Depression. I'm sure that had a large impact on him like it had on everybody else. He was an athlete from the time he started walking and going, he started running and moving. He could jump, he could run, he could shoot, and he had a full grasp of what was going on on the court. He had great anticipation. Um, he really felt the players around him, knew how to use his teammates. Cab was very well respected. I think the demeanor that he must have had and the leadership that he expressed gave him that respect. Even with all the accolades he accomplished in high school, there wasn't a lot in the way of college offers. Um, but Cab seems to be the kind of guy that just rolls and keeps moving forward had a desire to uh, get him an education and see what it would take him. Couldn't get a scholarship, but he went to Murray State College and they uh, gave him an opportunity to play. And he played some there. So he was down there for a couple years, two-time uh, junior college All-American, um, but still was having trouble, you know, garnering the attention he deserved. Of all the coaches in the nation in the early years of basketball, Henry Iba was one of the very best, and was the grandfather. Henry Iver really formed the basketball program, coaches at a small college in Missouri, and then he finds his way to Oklahoma A&M, and all they do is win. Cab met with Henry Iva and got a spot on the team. And then he led them to conference championship, and he was the captain of their team, a leading uh, uh, a player for the, the Aggies at that time. He was immediately thrust into a leadership role. Iba did say that he was one of his hardest workers. I guess the old cliche, the you know first one in, last one to leave. I think that speaks to a little bit about who he was as an individual and what he was capable of as far as his acumen. He enlists in the Navy, serves in World War II. It showed pride as a Native American warrior. He uh, saw a necessity uh, to be a part of World War II. And so he joined the service and served, as many others did. All of these things led into him being a successful individual as well as a successful athlete. Cab came in at the right time following World War II with the industrial leagues that were coming up. Back in the time we're talking about, 30s, 40s, and into the 50s and 60s, there was no National Basketball Association, um, at least as it's known today. So if you had the ability to play professional basketball, an industrial league team was the way to go, and it also garnered you a, a job. These were amateurs, not professionals. They weren't paid to play. They were paid to work for these corporations and then play on their teams. The Phillips 66ers were owned by the petroleum company of Phillips 66. And so a lot of times these guys would be recruited to work for Phillips, but they really wanted him to play for that basketball team. It was very important. It was a huge source of pride within the Industrial League. And Cab was famous for hustling, putting out effort, uh, having a good attitude, uh, supporting his coach, supporting his team. He was voted captain um, within the first couple of practices when they came together. And as the leading scorer and the director of what was going on on the court, um, he was their general and their leader. Cab played on the 1948 U.S. Olympic basketball team that was at the Olympic Games in London, England. That is a high level of, of achievement for a athlete to be able to qualify to play for the Olympics. And then he was chosen as the captain of that Olympic team. He was proud to represent the United States, and when they went, they went to win. He became the second American Indian to hold a gold medal for the United States. We have a picture in the back of the museum of that 48 uh, Olympics. When they won, they picked him up and carried him off the floor. He didn't think he was better than anybody else. He just was trying to do the best he could do. He had that kind of attitude throughout his life. That's one of the reasons he's been inducted into the Hall of Fames that he's been into. American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame, Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, Chickasaw, I mean, it goes on and on and on. 
who has recognized his accomplishments. I think probably the most significant award for Cab was the fact that every team he played on, he captained. Cab Rennick is the perfect example of what a young Chickasaw should look at as somebody who has not only succeeded, but they did it in a positive way.